Uh, welcome to the Siena webinar landscape series. And uh, this morning we'll be speaking with Mike Sarant, uh, owner and uh, founder and president of MicroLife Organic Biological Fertilizers. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to Mike. Great, thank you very much. I certainly appreciate Siena's uh, opportunity to visit with y'all out there. Uh, my name is Mike Sarant. My mom and I started uh, a company called San Jacinto Environmental Supplies in 84, uh, started investigating organics in 86, and then started manufacturing MicroLife in 1988. We've been manufacturing MicroLife for uh, 32 years. It's professional grade. Uh, we're all over the state. We're even in Hawaii and North Carolina. Um, but I don't mean to say we're a big company. We're still a very, very small family owned corporation. Got a great team, love what we do, love the landscape, nursery industry, horticultural, gardening. It's just to me, I've, I have found joy. And so as I've looked at what um, organics means over the course of years, and I love talking about organics, uh, uh, we have come up with a slogan called healthy soils, healthy plants, healthy people. And I hope um, through this slide presentation that that statement, why we say that, why it ties together is very, very important. So uh, let's talk about fall, fall lawn and garden. I think one of the main things to remember uh, which a lot of people forget is that the fall equinox started September 22nd. And that means things have changed. Okay. Uh, we mainly think about our warm season plants. Um, and at September 22nd, physiologically, they change. They go into a dormancy state, um, slow in the beginning, more later, but surely they go there. Of course, you can think about deciduous trees that lose their leaves. Uh, your turf grass is not growing as fast. And then we also look at this opportunity to think about the things that grow really well in cool season for us. And we're gonna have a beautiful, beautiful fall, winter, um, early spring. And so this gives us a grand opportunity to strengthen up our turf grass, grow a certain type of car that does well uh, during the cool seasons and grow vegetables like crazy. I mean, we can just have a lot of fun growing vegetables. Okay, so let's think about why landscape anyway. There's some outstanding reasons. Sienna Plantation, I've been out there a couple of times. Beautiful, beautiful association. People take a lot of pride in what they're doing. Uh, I don't blame them. It's a very close to nature type of um, community. And then each individual has their own homes, their own ecosystems, their own landscapes. Uh, you think need to think about this as your ecosystem, right? Your family that's outside and you need to take good care of your family. And if for no other reason than your home value, 15% of your home value with a well-maintained landscape can be 15% because of that landscape. So not only is the landscape gonna heal you, give you great joy, but it's gonna increase your wealth as well. And so we've done a lot of studies. Uh, let's see if I can show you a book. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is your brain on nature. There is scientific evidence out the wazoo of how much that mother nature surely loves and heals us all. Uh, she is constantly trying to get us into a better state of health. You create these gardens. You're going to find that, of course, that you've got serenity and peace from a stressful day. If you're doing your work at home and you're pounding out Zoom meetings one right after the other, hitting deadline spreadsheets, all you got to do is go outside and sit in your garden for a little bit. All of a sudden, you're feeling a lot better. But all this is um, scientifically validated. And this is just one of many, many, many scientific studies. In fact, I do a whole seminar on the value of nature to humanity. So one thing that we need to think about is that when we sit in this garden, we are breathing in more oxygen because plants give us oxygen, right? But they also, there's like 259 other phenophile chemical compounds that mother nature releases often odorless that we take in through our nostrils through our mouths, land on our skin. And these chemical signals do amazing things for us. They're gonna fight viruses like COVID. They're gonna fight cancer tumors. They're gonna repair physiological and neurological connections. This is what mother nature does. She surely and freely loves us all. Our immune system gets boosted. And another amazing fact, okay, now think about the human microbiome. This is the area since 2008 is the, is the largest area of medical research study, 
okay? The individual bacteria that live in your gut, your eyes, your heart, your brain, all parts of you, we cannot exist as human beings without a strong microbiome um, culture with us. And just to kind of give you an example, the average human body has 1 trillion human cells. That's what makes up me. But I should have at least 10 trillion beneficial microbes in my gut. And the microbes, as we're going to see in a few minutes, do amazing things, very, very important from us. But where do we get our gut microbes that power us into mental thinking, into immune system? 30% of that comes from the soil, as long as it's good, clean soil. Okay, so you can probably figure out where I'm going. That means you want to go organic and keep pesticides completely away from you, your family, your kids, and yourself, right? So what does the human microbiome do? Well, it's the greatest influence in the way we think. And this is our greatest immune system against viruses and cancers and all manners of other diseases. And their microbiome is all over the human body, but we're going to kind of concentrate on the gut a little bit. So within three days, you can change your biome one way or the other. If you eat you know, bad food, like junk food, you're going to have a bad human biome, which means you're going to have a bad mental thinking and you're going to have a compromised immune system, all ties together. So in the very beginning, I told you about, we started the company back in 1984. Uh, we started selling chemical fertilizers and pesticides because, hey, that's what you did in 1984. So that was a fertilizer I sold. Uh, I was very successful with it. I love sales, I guess you can probably tell. And then I picked up all the chemical pesticides that I needed to have to be a full-blown lawn and garden distributor. Um, I don't sell any of this crap any longer. I would never sell this stuff anymore. But in the beginning, I was very ignorant. Now, does anybody know what this is? It's not a gang sign. University of Houston, eat them up, coops. Okay, so I got a degree in marketing from University of Houston. I wasn't brainwashed by going to a land-grant agronomy school and being drummed in. This is how you uh, grow plants with chemicals. So my mom and I, Jack B. Nimble, Jack B. Quick. I noticed quickly that the more chemical fertilizers that I would sell, and we mainly sell to landscape professionals, institution, parks, colleges, hospital districts, cities, uh, uh, private, and we do a tremendously, uh, we're tremendously successful there. Grateful, very, very grateful. Um, so our connection has always been with the professional. So I would sell um, a professional, I'd say two tons a, a season of that fertilizer, 15, 5, 10. Uh, and then I would always seem to be able to sell them a lot of chemical insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides. And I thought, well, I don't get it. Isn't this food? So I would talk to my uplinks, my mentors, the people that were teaching me the business. And they say, hey, man, don't kill the golden goose. Because you're selling that fertilizer, it's because it's going to give you the opportunity to sell all these other chemical uh, pesticides. And I thought, man, this is really backwards. This is really wrong. Um, I think plant food, like human food, should heal the system and not weaken it. Chemical fertilizers weaken the system. Didn't take me a big genius to figure out that there was something wrong with this program. So then uh, my wife and I became hippies, uh, got ourselves a little van and traveled across the country to find out what, you know, what, this, what, what was life all about. And I want to ask you, which one am I? Okay. So anyway, going forward, um, we found out that everything is connected and we talked about the human microbiome that mother nature truly wants to heal us all black, white, rich, poor, male, female, Hispanic, Anglo, it does not make any difference. Mother nature indiscriminately wants to heal us all. And we're all tied into this really beautiful system. Let's don't screw the system up. Let's try to find out how mother nature works. Go with this magnificent force. It is absolutely folly to fight mother nature. We are not going to win. And she wants to help us. So why don't we try to help her? And that's where the beauty of organics comes in. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We will also get into specific lawn and garden programs. Um, you're gonna know everything you need to know about how to grow successful plants. And this fall, grow, 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 grow like crazy, okay? So let's go back to some really famous thinkers. Uh, and this is very, very, very important. You know, basically folks, Everything's connected. We're all tied together. We are the civil, we are the environment. You can't separate humans from nature. We're all in this together and we will not have a civilized society if we destroy the environment, bottom line. 
Okay, so then we end coming up and we developed the MicroLife uh, family of products and we're always expanding. We're always looking to do things. Uh, everything is technology and science based. So we use no animal manure. People think, hey, you're spreading cow manure. No, we're not. Things are a lot more technical, a lot more scientific. And if you look at all the great research in agriculture and in horticulture, it's all organic based. The chemical industry, there is nothing new coming out of the chemical industry. In fact, all the fertilizer recommendations, everything that's come out from the chemical industry is 70 years old. Yeah, yes, they may develop new poisons. And yes, they may know how to blend new poisons together. But the chemical industry does not know how to grow plants and people safely. Okay, big difference. So through the years, we've been very, very lucky. University of Texas is one of our clients on fertilizer views since 2009 is MicroLife. Um, Centennial Park, another Houston icon, um, nothing but MicroLife, very, very, very successful because of their organic programs. They're both the number one park um, in America. I'm very, very happy for Houston uh, that that has occurred. Uh, Dallas Arboretum, have any of y'all ever been there? Wow. What a place. It is the finest arboretum I've ever seen. And uh, one thing that you're going to notice through a trend as I showed some of these slides that all the great arboretums um, in Texas all believe and use organics because yes, the philosophy of organics is solid, but when you're an arboretum, the number one thing you have to produce is beautiful, beautiful plants. All the major botanical gardens in Texas use organics. And I'm proud to say microlife. And I'm not trying to make this about a microlife infomercial, but I love microlife. It's my 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 creation, um, I, and it just does great, great, great things. And I hope you all consider uh, to use it as well. But if nothing else, just go organic and not pesticides, uh, chemical pesticides. This is Centennial Garden. It's another iconic jewel for Houston. Seven eco zooms, all organic, absolutely spectacular. This is in the Herman Park Museum District. Definitely go to it if you have a chance. Uh, this Houston Zoo uses um, um, organics since 1996, nothing but organics. And uh, before you sell anything to the zoo, you have to give the veterinarian council your complete specifications. Because if you go to the Houston Zoo, they're growing, they're building magnificent habitat centers. They're putting animals in there to make them feel comfortable. They're using microlife to grow plants to provide food and shelter and make the animals feel comfortable. They cannot have a Remus monkey or a Siberian tiger eat anything uh, that makes them sick. They also are completely organic on the outside grounds. They have 8 million people during a normal year. Probably about 80% of that are kids. Kids have a very susceptible immune system to pesticides. They're completely organic. Uh, have been for uh, over two decades, very successful, just don't have plant problems because things are just working well for them. Uh, Texas A&M, uh, great work we're doing at Texas A&M. We picked up Texas A&M's entire College Station campus fertilization uh, this year. Uh, very, very happy that they decided to go that way. Uh, we're involved in building corporate headquarters, uh, Exxon, uh, one of the ones that happened a few years ago when the entire subdivisions are into the organics, such as Springwood, very, very happy. The latest, the latest, the latest jewel, and you gotta go see this folks, it's worth your time, is the Houston Botanical Gardens. Um, now it's opening up in stages, stage one is opened up. It's, it's just magnificent. And obviously uh, they decide that they need to grow the plants the best, so they're gonna grow um, organically as well. Okay, so uh, hopefully that we're starting to get this um, theme set up for everybody and everybody feels comfortable with it. The future is organics. Organics will always be true to you and give you the best results. So through my years, and believe me, folks, I have fought so many chemical rednecks about this. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But there's three myths that still exist. It costs too much. It takes too long. doesn't produce results. None of that's true. None of that is true. It's like if you watch a McDonald's commercial, if you, eat a, if you eat McDonald's, if I watch that commercial, it tells me I'm going to have a girlfriend. I'm always going to be laughing. None of that is true. OK, so why does organics always work better? Well, we talked about a couple of things. One, it follows natural law. Now, nutrition, and we're going to get into this. This is huge for your soils, for your plants, for your pets, for your children and for you. 
okay? Another core principle is healthy growth. We don't want growth that's gonna have problems with insects and weeds and diseases. And anytime we do something that is biologically correct, it's always, 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 always economically the most feasible. And so organics has to be safe. And uh, if something really important to us is about conserving water too, very, very precious water. We're not gonna get into that too much, but we could do it at a later date. Okay, so we've done a lot of cost analysis and look, oh, look at this. Look at the bottom line. And it shows that the cost of going chemical is about $4,000 an acre. Hmm, what's the cost of going organics? $1,200 an acre. See, organics don't cost more. It's all, all a bunch of myths that have been put out by a bunch of chemical rednecks that don't wanna let that industry go. Okay, so what is organics? We'll talk about this a little bit. We might not real long, but we'll talk about this and we'll get into um, uh, plant care products and uh, procedures. It's a story of nutrition and it follows natural law. So let's talk about a little bit about the story of nutrition, okay? So we're gonna use McDonald's again as an example. If you're hungry, you can go out and get like a burger, fries and a Coke for like five bucks. Or you go to Jason's Deli and get a nice salad bar with some organic um, salad material for like around 10. What are you gonna do? Five bucks versus 10? Let's go five bucks. Well, what do you get? Well, you don't get any minerals or vitamins and you get enough fat, sodium and carbs to last you two days. No nutritional value, enough carbs to last you one day with one meal. You're gonna feel hungry again. You're gonna eat again. You're gonna still get nothing except something that just expands the cell walls of your stomach, no nutrition. Or you can pay a little bit more. You go to Jason's Deli you get your carbs, your sodium, everything can be lined up in proper order, 25 plus vitamins and minerals. So what happens if you eat bad food? Oh my God, you're snoozing at your computer. You don't feel like doing anything. Or you need something good and let's go teach the kids how to slide, okay? So I don't know about you. I don't wanna be the snoozer. I wanna be the slider. So we look at what's happening to America, the most wealthiest country in the world, most powerful country in the world. 25% of the world's GDP comes from America, richest country in the world but we are the most chronically ill people in the world. More COVID related illnesses, infections, deaths. We lead in dementia, autism, diabetes, prediabetes, cancer, heart. Why? Well, because of the diet that most of us eat, okay? And if we look at nothing else, we look at uh, uh, the amount of uh, diabetes that has risen over the course of years. Sorry, folks, I'm at, at my office. Let me see if I can turn this down. I apologize for that. Diabetes didn't used to be a problem, but it is absolutely a man-made problem. This adult type two, not um, a genetic problem. It's what we do to ourselves. We don't have to be diabetics. And so let's go back and let's take a look at um, plant material, plant fertilizer. You can go to a local nursery and buy yourself a bag of 15, 5, 10 for 25 bucks, 15% nitrogen, or you can get yourself a 40 pound bag of microlife, 6% nitrogen. 15 sounds like more than six, except 80% of that 15% in a chemical form never gets to the plant. So you spent 25 bucks for 3% nitrogen. Economically, better spend $40 for something with 6%, twice as much. That fertilizer, the, uh, the chemical fertilizer on the left, uh, is gonna contain a lot of salts. I used to sell this fertilizer to the Houston Aviation Department as a runway de-icer. Okay, anybody that knows horticultural, uh, look at the salt index, 99.9%. Anything above 69 is hazardous to plants, causes them to burn. It compacts soils, it kills microbes, very small mineral spectrum as well. Look at the organic fertilizer. It's just loaded with goodness. You cannot go wrong, you cannot burn. You're gonna give your plants, your soils, I mean, the greatest nutrition you possibly can. You get that type of foundation, you're gonna have great luck. Because if you use bad fertilizers, I'm telling you folks, I've got tons of experience with this, your plants are gonna get sick. And that means you're gonna think about using more pesticides and more water. All pesticides are dangerous. There's not one chemical pesticide, weeds or diseases or anything that is not dangerous for human contact. So you don't wanna use things that are gonna cause your plants to um, um, have problems. Now plants need at least 52 uh, minerals to be um, healthy. 
a normal chemical fertilizer has three or seven. So automatically by applying a chemical fertilizer, you're causing um, uh, malnourishment, okay? And that's when an organism is malnourished, that's when it's most susceptible to problems. Well, a good organic fertilizer is going to be come all the minerals that a plant could ever possibly need. And so how do plants find, or how do pest insects find plants? Well, plants do three things. They send out signals, uh, they, they color change that we can't see with our naked eye. We need special lenses. They send out uh, vibrations, they send out gas. Their plants are always communicating with each other. And, and in my session, uh, the love of mother nature, we talk a little bit about this more. But plants that are ill send out signals that pest insects come in and take out. Call it Darwinism, call it theology. Maybe God doesn't want us to eat bad food, so he takes the, puts the bad in, or, so he puts the pest insects in out there to scavenge the bad food away. In organics, there is an adage, and it's a good adage too. Never eat food that's fit for insects. Because if a pest insect is eating on that plant, that's because that plant is ill and the fruit that becomes off of that plant is not going to be very nourishing for you. Okay, so this is Mercer Arboretum. I'm very, very fortunate to be able to work with these guys. They have a um, quarter of a million of visitors during a normal year. Um, they cannot spray chemical pesticides because of all the kids, pregnant mom, elderly people that come. Folks, Another great place to grow. Absolutely go. Actually, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plants. Okay, so through this, and I hope that, um, uh, whoops, I hope that uh, through my session, if nothing else, even if you don't take your lawn organic, make sure you eat organic foods. You want foods to be your nourishment, your medicine. And Hippoc Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine 2,500 years ago, said, let food be thy medicine. Okay, no true roots. Okay, so this is a famous study. Four years uh, by JAMA, 75,000 um, uh, people participated in this study. And this study says that if you just eat organic foods, just eat organic foods, you'll reduce your risk of cancer by 25%. Okay, so organic foods do cost you more at Kroger's, wherever you buy your food, but you're reducing your risk of cancer by at least 25%. Friggin sign me up to buy organic foods all day long. And I hope you all do the same. Okay, this is a good slide. Okay, this is gonna tell you just how easy things are. It's just a little step program. Uh, we'll, uh, you all start writing the stuff down and this might have said that this uh, uh, presentation is gonna be recorded. So you can maybe come back and take a look at this. But it's very, very easy to grow plants. It's not hard. I mean, Mother Nature's gonna do most of the work. Make sure you've got good soil, okay? Um, uh, you know, a lot of times people will buy on price and not quality. Do not buy bad soil. You know, go to some place like Enchanted Gardens or Enchanted Forest. Um, uh, your independent garden centers are going to have very knowledgeable people, and they're going to put you in the right soil. Soil is the foundation, right? Um, Nature's Way is, is my favorite brand. Um, uh, you, you will just have better luck. Okay, then you want to work in microlife and you want to work in microgrow. Um, and then once the plants are in the soil, you want to water them in with a, with a microlife liquid product, cover with a hardwood mulch, and then spray over the top of the plants. We're going to talk about why we want to foliar spray in just a little bit. But anyway, you foliar spray with maximum blooms or whatever liquid you like about every two weeks. And the idea is nutrition, 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 nutrition. You'll grow beautiful plants that will taste so spectacular. Uh, now you may have some problems. I mean, organics is not 100% problem free, but if there is a problem, there's always a safe organic solution, okay? Working with the independent garden center is the place to be. Microlife is never going to be in box stores. You'll never find us at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. We have been asked and we have refused. That's just not us. Independent garden centers place to go. Okay, and then look, Jane Goodall, who could say it better than this, right? How could we ever believe that it's a good idea to grow our food with poisons? Just absolutely insane. But things are changing, things are getting better. So following natural law, okay? So all energy comes from the sun, the uh, plants uh, drop their leaves, big old uh, uh, photo cells are collecting the sun, crystallizing in energy, they're using it to produce food for themselves, 
50% of the food that a plant produces go out the root system to feed the microbes, the individual fungi and bacteria that grow in the soil should grow in the soil. And in turn, those microbes protect the plants, grow healthy plants, healthy uh, animals, healthy people. Okay, natural law connects us all together. So in organics, we have an adage that says, feed the soil, feed the plant. So when we say feed the soil, that's just kind of colloquialism. We're not actually going to feed the quartz or the silica, the clay particles. We're actually going to feed the animals, the microorganisms that live in the soil. Now, back in the 1980s, when my mom and I started the company, somebody said, hey, I've got bacteria or nematodes in my yard. What do I do about it? I would say, use this canister of really bad poison and just spray everything. Boy, what an idiot I was. I mean, how stupid and how ignorant I was. So we now know that the vast majority of every one of these categories, nematodes included, are beneficial and essential. There's over 3,000 uh, species of nematodes that have been identified. Only 19 are considered harmful to plants. The vast majority are beneficial. And we talked about bacteria inside the human gut, the eyes, the brain, everything. We need that. 30% of our immune system basically comes from the soil. Feed the soil, feed the plant. That means that whatever you do to the soil, has to be beneficial and make these guys grow bigger. Natural law, natural law folks. And so if you look at a handful of um, good healthy soil, just think one handful of healthy soil has more individual microorganisms in it than there are people in the planet. That's just a handful. Think about your 100 square foot garden or your 4,000 square foot turf grass area. How many microorganisms should be in there in a healthy soil? The numbers are astronomical. Hey, it's so hard for us to fathom but they're there and they're there for a purpose. Okay, this guy, anybody know who this guy is? Can you guess what his purpose is? Okay, this is called um, a water bear or Terry Gardier. And these guys live in healthy, non-chemical pesticide soils. Look at that snout. Is he an Italian spaghetti eater? Well, he could be, but actually what he does is he hunts for bad nematodes. And he will be in your soil if you don't use chemical pesticides. Really cute guy. I'd love to have him as a four-foot pet and help me watch football or something. Um, okay, so now we're going to start getting into a little bit of uh, fall lawn care. And when I get through with my presentation, I'm very happy to stick around uh, to answer questions. I know I'm kind of going kind of fast, but we want to, uh, Smida and I want to get, um, say, about 40 minutes. We don't want to tie you up too much on a Saturday. Hey, get out there in the lawn garden, right? So um, a lot of y'all may be having some brown patch problems that can be avoided. Your lawn may be wrecked by sod webworms. Uh, just remember the fall equinox, September 22nd, you cannot grow a grass quickly now. You will not be able to grow grass quickly until April. So if you have a spot, you can get a little bit of growth in, but you're really gonna start being prepared. You're starting to start to prepare your, your, your landscape for spring. If you have large areas and you can't stand it, you're going to either have to resod or apply ryegrass because the grass is you're going to have a difficult time trying to grow. Now you will get some recovery. I'm just trying to be clear about that. Okay, so if you have no brown patch problem, this is what you want to use. You're going to use this great product on the left and you're going to use this other product on the right, uh, which is uh, basically concentrated compost. Makes it very easy to put com compost on your soils. We're going to talk about that product a little bit more extensively, but let's talk about the one on the, on the left. Uh, anything that you can go, uh, anything, if you're going to put it out in your lawn, you're going to use a spreader, goes through very, very easily, not going to be any problems. And so we list all the ingredients that are on our products. And if you go to our website, we, we tell you everything that we put in it. So everything that's on here, you can find on our website. And everything that's in that list of ingredients has to be good for the plant, as well as the microorganisms in the soil that you just can't build a good organic fertilizer without that. We give you the complete specifications, um, the midsection, the large midsections, all the microorganisms that we put in there. You can look up anyone on Google and they'll tell you why we're putting them in there. Okay. So we also add uh, yucca as a wetting agent. So many of y'all, can you hear this? That's what your clay soil looks like. Uh, it's basically concrete. And so we want to try to loosen up that soil and we use yucca to open up the clay soil. So the minerals and the uh, inoculants, and maybe I did not emphasize that enough, 
But going back, we put billions and billions of probiotics in each and every bag of microlife. Okay, so we're going to feed the indigenous uh, microbes and we're going to add beans more. We're always trying to push healthy, healthy growth. Um, just kind of a little schematic. Uh, what happens if you use a, um, a product that's got microorganisms, uh, you're going to have much greater, healthier growth. Uh, we're going to put in stuff like this mycorrhizal, which is very important, probably the most researched uh, microorganism going right now. Uh, in the center of the slide, you have the large yellowish orange um, 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 uh, lines, that's the original root. All the white that you see is the uh, mycorrhizal fungi. These are fungi that want an association with the plant. The plant wants an association with the fungi. They come together in a symbiotic relationship. The plant feeds the microorganisms, in this case, the mycorrhizals. The mycorrhizal feeds the plant, protects it, finds it water, oxygen, all manner of things. It's a beautiful, beautiful system. Why would we want to disturb that system by putting out filthy chemical pesticides and killing this um, uh, wonder of nature? Okay, this is that enchanted um, forest, uh, which is kind of close to you guys. And it just shows you what microlife will do against uh, uh, the best of the, of, the, of the synthetic liquid fertilizers. Uh, if you have brown patch, um, uh, brown patch is uh, like adult type 2 diabetes. It is self-inflicted. Um, remember we talked about the clay soils, how tight they are. We do remember how hot it was in July and August. and It's a little warm in October too, and we overwater. And uh, when we overwater, we push out what are remaining oxygens in that soil out. We create an anaerobic condition. Pathogens, root diseases always are anaerobic. They want that lack of oxygen. That's what that's what their environment is. Your good microorganisms, your plants, of course, humans, we're all aerobic. We need oxygen. So there's two ways you can do things. One is you want to seriously take a look at how much water you're putting out because remember we did hit the fall equinox. Things are going dormant. Yes, it was hot in October, but not August hot. There's not as much light happening. It's just plants are just not growing. They don't need a lot of water. So if you want to um, fight brown patch and fertilize correctly, uh, use microlife brown patch. If you just want to fight the brown patch and not fertilize, then you use microgrow. Now, of all the sides, the pesticides, uh, the, the insecticides, the herbicides, and the fungicides, the da most dangerous, dangerous chemical pesticide is always the chemical fungicide. Never, ever use a chemical fungicide for whatever reason. Microlife, uh, microgrow is biological, safe. You can pick it up with your hands. You can eat it. Absolutely zero, zero, zero problems with yourself. Uh, so this, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, to preventing brown patch, do not use chemical fertilizers because they tighten the soil, pushes oxygen out, makes it difficult for, for drainage to happen. We already talked about chemical fungicides, and you do not want to over irrigate. If you get on my website, uh, www.microlifefertilizer.com, we, you know, of course, you can get all the specifications on our products, and we talk about brown patch. Lots of really great articles on, on the website. You'll learn a lot. Um, chemical soil, that's the type of soil that your home was built with. It'll never change with chemicals. Uh, once you start working with organics, you're going to get greater friability, greater water infiltration, greater root, grass, root growth, uh, greater water storage capabilities. You can reduce your watering by 50% just by going organic. And that should pretty much pay for your organic program right there, plus all the safety factors as well. Uh, never use chemical fungicides. They're like antibiotics. If the doc ever gives you antibiotics, I'm sure we've all taken some. An antibiotic doesn't know what's a good microbe or a bad microbe. It just takes out all the microbes in your gut. Remember, we need the good gut microbes. Same thing with the soil. A chemical fungicide doesn't know good versus bad. It just takes them all out, which is not what we want. Um, it's better to do this. This is beneficial microbes around the root system. They will give your plant protection. That's what you want. That's natural law. So microlife brown patch, we talked about that. We talked about microgrow, uh, fall shrub care, very easy. Didn't we just see this with our lawns? Yes, just whatever you can do for your lawn, make it easy on yourself. Just do your, your ornamental shrubs as well. Just take microlife 624, humate plus, throw them out and do the same day. Nothing's gonna burn. You're gonna add carbon, minerals, microbes, all sorts of stuff. 
and you're going to give your, your plants the, 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 the nutrition that they need to go through the dormancy season, they are not dead. They are just going through a different season. They're kind of building up, getting ready for their time of year, which is going to start around April. Okay. Uh, Humates, uh, fantastic product, um, recommended highly. What is Humates? We call it concentrated compost. A uh, little picture on the right shows what it looks like. Um, stored um, plant energy, uh, stored sunlight. It makes this is very, very easy to apply. All plants need carbon. All microorganisms need carbon. Chemical fertilizers have no carbon. Uh, microlife fertilizers always do, and then you can get extra carbon with the humates. Uh, you're going to do amazing things uh, with your soils and your plants. You're going to give them a big dose of uh, energy, a big dose of minerals. You're going to feed the microbes like crazy. It's like you put a little sign inside your soil that said, all you can eat, uh, long chain carbon molecules. They have chemical compounds that stimulate root growth chemical compounds that will take clay partlets, split them apart. Amazing, amazing stuff. Very, very inexpensive to use. Uh, this is some work, typical work that we see with uh, uh, using humates. Uh, this is uh, a really beat up bad sports field on the left in the middle of summer, um, uh, twice a week uh, water restrictions, 1,500 kids a week playing on it. Uh, one application humates three weeks later in August, amazing difference, right? Okay, well, what we have here, now this is going to be fun. This is your color program, okay? You're going to have a fantastic opportunity to put uh, uh, beautiful plants in your pots and in your front yard and your backyard. I mean, just to give us that, uh, that joy and enlightenment that flowers give us, okay? Very, very easy program. It's going to be a lot like your vegetable program that we talked about. Get good soil. Okay, if you've got good soil and you need to beef it up a little bit, get good compost. Buy good quality. Nature's ways, best quality. Add your microlife uh, 846. Add your microgrow to prevent diseases. Water in with maximum bloom. Spray every two weeks. And remember, folks, your landscape is your family. They had to say part of you. Don't forget to take care of them. You'll have great luck. This is exactly what the landscape professional did, exactly the program that the landscape professionals use. Very, very successful. Uh, oh, this is one of our success. Remember we talked about the Springwood subdivision? Look at this color. You can't get this color with chemicals. This is this is what nutrition looks like, okay? Organic weed control, I wanna talk a little bit about this. Uh, I think we've got like about three or four or five minutes at the most. Um, look at that clover growing. If you listen to the uh, chemical commercials, they say that clover grows to deliberately disrespect you. You don't believe that, do you? Clover's a pretty little plant. It's a legume. It fixes nitrogen. I do not want to poison my yard to get rid of clover, okay? So um, we need to know this, and I teach a class on herbicides. Uh, well, not herbicides, but weed control. And I've taught it for A&M. It's that all chemical fertilizers and all chemical um, herbicides push weed growth, you know, if I'm manufacturing chemical herbicides and I can sell you to buy it every season and I'm the guy that's causing you the problem to rebuy it every season, wow, what a way to make money. Well, that's exactly what happens. So use chemical herbicides, have weeds, okay? I don't want to have weeds. I don't want to buy chemical herbicides. Now, if you put out a weed and feed or a chemical herbicide, you're trying to get these little weeds. What else are you getting? You're killing the microorganisms in the soil that affect tree, plant, and shrub growth, okay? And also you're affecting anything that walks across that lawn, which could be you, your kids, your grandkids, or your pets. Now, this is big, this is important. This is one of the reasons why people are turning to organics. Um, very well-documented studies, studies, plural, state that chemical pesticides cause cancer in dogs. That's like the canary in the mine shaft because dogs and humans have an 80% common DNA. We're not that far apart from them. And the canary in the mine shaft says that if chemical pesticides are causing cancer in dogs, guess what they're doing to humans? Don't use chemical pesticides, okay? So we have a, um, a saying at the office, no clover, no rover, okay? Um, now you gotta remember this too, 
that all chemical pesticides, all chemical pesticides weaken the human immune system. And if COVID is talking now, Smita is, is, I love her attitude about things. Life, life is, we all need to think like her. And, but one thing that we were talking about earlier was that how people have changed a little bit. That we seem to be friendly to each other. Um, I think now we've also developed uh, a more respect for human health, that all uh, human health is important and that human health is paramount. Organics are just going through the roof this year. Who wants to be around poisons, right? I don't. Um, now, if you want all organic uh, fields without herbicides, take a look at this. This is, I mean, you can't ask for better turf grass than that. This wins awards and not putting any chemical herbicides out. Pretty darn nice. And so we kind of need to change our thinking uh, is that they're not weeds, they're lawn herbs. I mean, these plants that grow, I get it. I don't want them either, but they're not really bad. Okay, they're there for a purpose, and we can talk about that in a kind of an extensive area. But if you go on my website, uh, w.microlifefertilizer.com, you can download a book called Organic Weed Control, and this will explain it um, a little better. I don't think God or creation makes anything that's bad, okay? What's caused these things to be bad are people that make money, that make poison to kill these things. They're there to help the soils get better. So it gets better, their job's done, they say, see you later. And so this kind of tells us a little bit. On the left, you have uh, typical chemically managed soil. Weeds grow in weedy soils. Nature is trying to heal that soil and make it into redwood forest areas. Starts with prairies and moves into your perennial grasses. If you start working with organics, you're going to start. You're going to have less problems. So one of the best things you can do is concentrate at compost, which is humane plus and some other weed control deals. And um, I'm thinking I need to kind of start moving out of here. Um, so we want to use liquids. Uh, you want to do things that've got a combination of fish, seaweed, humic acid, and molasses. This is just what happens with seaweed, just seaweed alone. Uh, amazing root growth. You're going to foliar spray your plants, water them in with liquids. This is something that's fascinating. Uh, I wish I could have more time, but this is some stuff we're doing. Well, not just us. We're A lot of people are, are researching it. We're just having to participate with Virginia Tech on this, is that if you foliar spray plants, it's going to increase the photosynthesis ability by two to three times percent. Unbelievable. That's just two to three times more photosynthesis means more food for the plants, more food for the microbes. Everything works better just by foliar spraying with the right material. Okay, guess what? We hit the end. Uh, love Mother Nature. She surely and freely loves you back. Uh, for more information, I'm going to leave this slide up. You can get some great information to keep moving forward uh, in your quest for organics, healthier lives by going um, and visiting these organizations. So I am done, uh, but I've got time. If you want to chat questions, uh, verbally express questions, uh, if you just want to say goodbye and get out in the garden and start digging, I get it. But I'm available if y'all have any questions. We do have a few questions uh, that were typed into the Q&A. Um, incidentally, for those of you who joined us after we began, you can um, click on the Q&A box at the bottom um, and type in your questions and uh, Mike can answer them. Um, at this time. Um, the first question we have is, how do you maintain and prevent uh, weeds in the grass? Well, it's, uh, you change the biology of the soil. Uh, you change the composition of the soil. Um, weeds, if you look at what weeds are doing, and there's volumes of books that describe what weeds are and how they're working. So we'll call them lawn herbs instead of weeds, okay? Uh, weeds just has a weeds, you know, and and weeds are not uh, not demons, okay? They're they're there for a purpose. You know, even your dreaded Virginia buttonweed is there for some type of purpose, telling you you're watering too much, you need more common, you need to go more fungal, okay? They're always there. So if you try to address um, the conditions, and this is the homeopathic approach rather than the allopathic approach. Allopathic approach is that I'm going to poison everything and hope that I poison the enemy more than I poison the rest of the body. Think chemotherapy, right? Um, the homeopathic approach is I'm going to build up the health of everything and the healthy parts of the body are going to outcompete against the 
bad parts of the body. But the weeds are there. I would basically look at irrigation, make sure you are not watering too much. Um, start adding uh, Microlite Humate Plus. Um, start using um, organic fertilizers. Do not use chemical herbicides, chemical fertilizers, chemical fungicides, or chemical insecticides. Um, and then nothing's going to be perfect in this world. You may have to hand pull, spot creep with some vinegar or something like that. But that's what I would do. I would never put a chemical pesticide on my lawn. Um, okay. The next question they typed was, um, there's a fungus growing on the branch of my trees and roses. What should I apply to remove and heal that? Well, that's almost like calling the doctor and say, doctor, I don't feel good. I mean, how do you know? I mean, I don't have a picture of what that is. Uh, uh, so we don't know uh, uh, what it is. And I'm not trying to be flippant about it. But, you know, I would uh, cut a couple of branches off and take it to Enchanted uh, Forest or Enchanted Gardens to have them ID it. If you want just a general uh, foliar spray that's safe, uh, get neem oil. Uh, it's made from the neem tree. Uh, it's safe for you to be around and you can foliar spray that. When you say foliar, what does that mean? Uh, you put it in a um, pump up sprayer or one of those little canisters that attach to the hose and we're spraying liquids onto oh, okay. the plant leaves. Gotcha. That's a good question. Thank you for um, asking that. Sometimes I take things for granted. How do you prevent bugs that can kill the vegetables on plants? Nutrition uh, um, and growing them in the right condition. Uh, if you, you plant, it's not natural for plants to have problems. Okay, it's natural for plants to be healthy. Look at uh, the forests, the prairies. Uh, is, is anybody doing anything to take care of those plants? No, it, they do well. Okay, so you just want to make sure on vegetables you never use chemical uh, insecticides. Uh, good soil, uh, we talked about that, uh, which means you're going to have good drainage. You're going to need a certain amount of light. Uh, so you want to make sure that you've got a, a pretty good place. It's got like six hours of sunlight. Uh, you want to use really good organic fertilizers. And if you grow the plant well, it's not attracted to the pest insect. So there you go. How do you choose a good soil for your plants? I think uh, in this case, the simplest thing to do is to go for branding and you go for nature's way resources. When I make microlife organic fertilizers, I make statements on the back. I have to be able to prove that to the state chemist's office. In the worlds of soils, mulch, and compost, it's like the Wild West. There's nobody that regulates what those bags say or what the companies that manufacture them say. And they can tell you that it's the world's best compost, get, you know, 10 bags for 20 bucks or something like that. If you buy bad soil, you're going to have problems. Buy on quality. I go out and consulting all the time, as you can imagine. Uh, if you buy a cubic yard of bad compost, that's 1,500 pounds. And if you put 1,500 pounds of bad stuff in your lawn, how hard is it to get that lawn to recover? As opposed, you know, we're asking to put 20 pounds of microlife per thousand square feet, as opposed to 1500 pounds of compost. So just buy good quality. And again, going back to the independence, go in there, tell me what nature's way, tell me what you want to grow, they'll set you up with the right soil. Next question, I, I think, I think the best way to ask this is when you're looking at organic fertilizers, what are the the important components to look for on the label? Well, I think that's a great question. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a couple of things not to look for. That's going to be very, very important. You don't want any fertilizer that's got poultry products in it. Okay. Poultry, feather mill, poop, manure, very inexpensive. It's a biomedical hazard that the major chemical uh, chicken growers have to get rid of. And they can get rid of it two ways. One is they uh, build lagoon pits and remediate away. Or in the great wisdom of the USDA, they say they can sell it as an organic fertilizer. Yes, it's considered organic, but it's loaded with antibiotics, steroids, um, uh, arsenic, 
you buy it, you put on your lawn antibiotics we don't want, arsenic we certainly don't want, steroids we don't want. So make sure that your fertilizer does not have any poultry products in it. Um, you also don't want any sewage sludge, which could be called a couple different things. You know, if you are trying to avoid monosodium glutamate in your own personal diet, that there are 35 ways that a chemical, uh, that a food company can list monosodium glutamate and not call it monosodium glutamate. So there's different ways you can list sewage sludge, but you don't want sewage sludge, you don't want poultry products, you don't want potassium chloride. I think you want something that's got a really diverse um, combination of plant, rock, and animal matter, and you want it inoculated at proper rates with your probiotics. Microlife is your best product. Is Microlife effective for box garden plants? For what, what's that one more time? Box, box garden plants. If you're talking about small arenas, absolutely. Uh, the last question I have here is what do, what, what does the humate do and when do you apply it? Well, with organics, um, remember uh, most of the fertilizer knowledge we have is 60, 70 years old, pretty anquidated. Um, certainly hadn't kept up with the times. You can put out um, a good quality organic any time of the year, just like I can start getting in better shape any time of the year. I don't have to wait to New Year's to make my, the resolution date. Um, but basically, if you understand what compost is and what compost does, uh, Microlife Humate Plus is just an easy, I'm not trying to take, take away from good quality compost, but for a lot of people, it's trouble to put out the bulk compost. Um, it's heavy, it's kind of expensive. Microlife Humate Plus, we call it concentrated compost in a bag. It's got the carbon, which feeds the microorganisms. I do, it is absolutely loaded with microorganisms, which is what compost has. And so what compost or humates will do, basically, especially in turf grass soils, which are really terrible soils to begin with, they'll start adding organic matter, start loosening them up, works better loosening up soil than gypsum. Um, it'll uh, build bigger roots. Uh, it'll give the plants 63 minerals. It'll put a very strong probiotic culture around the plants. Uh, it will green up plants. It will cause plants to grow. It's just a terrific, um, terrific product. Very inexpensive. I would use it all the time, anytime. Okay, those are all the questions that I have listed. If anybody else has any more questions, um, you can certainly email them to us um, at operations at clubcna.com. That's operations with an S at the end. Um, and I can forward those to Mike and, and he can provide answers for those. This webinar is being recorded and it will be available for future viewing too. So if you have friends um, that missed it or, or just didn't realize it was going on, um, you can certainly, I, I will uh, take all your emails and forward the link to you um, sometime this coming week. Um, again, this is, um, my name is Smita. I work with the Siena Association's Operations Department and Mike Sarant was our speaker this morning. Mike, thank you very much for joining us. Um, that was a very fun and informative uh, lecture series. Um, this is the first of three. Um, and there are two more um, available these up to upcoming Saturdays. Next Saturday is Daniel Milliken. Um, he is a radio show host that talks about landscaping every Saturday, I believe. Um, and then the following week in November 7th is uh, John Panzarella, citrus tree expert. Um, and he's also a, a very interesting guy. Um, and I'm sure we'll enjoy that as well. Um, we are planning, the, the association is planning to deliver quarterly webinars like this uh, beginning in 2021 as well. So Mike, thank you for being our first webinar speaker. It was great, very successful. Um, and like I said, if anybody has any more questions go, um, that you think about after we log off here, feel free to email them to us and, and I can uh, send them over to Mike. Mike, do you have any um, contact information that you want to add? Well, I do want to say thank you. Uh, I thought you were just awesome to work with throughout this entire process. Uh, you are a true professional. You planned early. You kept in contact. You just made everything extremely easy. Uh, I thank the Siena uh, residents that um, 
sat in and thank Troy uh, uh, for you know masterminding this. Uh, contact information, the website's on the screen right now. I um, hope you all had a fun time. I certainly did a uh, wonderful time. And that's really about it. Let's get outside and garden. It's beautiful weather out there right now. All right, yes, have folks. a great weekend, everyone. You Thank you for joining us.